Hey there, I'm so glad you're joining me for another round or another day of praying for your husband. Today's topic ties into what we prayed about yesterday. So yesterday we were praying that our husbands would have strength in the face of temptation. Today we're going to pray for victory over sin. So it's very similar to what we prayed yesterday, but especially if there are root sins or um, just deeply held sins that your husband is having a hard time breaking free from, that's what we're going to be praying for today, just true victory over sins that might hold your husband captive. A quick reminder <clears throat> is that our job is to be praying for our husbands, not to use this as an excuse to complain to God about all the things we wish he would change about our husbands. The purpose of praying for our husbands to have victory over sin isn't so that we'll have a more comfortable life or that our husbands will be doing what we think they should be doing, but so that they can have a closer relationship with the Lord. So just something to be careful about. It's also a good reminder for us that when we're praying for our husband's sins, we should also be regularly confessing our own. So that is our reminder for the day. Let's think about though those sins that do have strongholds over us. Like in Romans 7, Paul says, For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I do. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin living in me. It's kind of a tongue twister there. But even Paul went through these struggles where I'm sure we can all relate. You don't know why you keep on sinning. You don't know why you can't get over this sin. You want to improve. You want to have victory over it but it's got you in bondage. And some real encouragement comes from Isaiah 61. Um, says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. And Jesus used this exact passage to explain why he came to earth. Bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. No matter how strong of a sin your husband might be held by, whether it's things that aren't as visible, like maybe there's bitterness or resentment, or maybe it's things that are quite visible, like drug addiction or alcoholism or things like that. Whatever that sin is, God is big enough to overcome that, and he can use our prayers. I would say more than anything, the prayers of a spouse and a parent are probably the most powerful because we're so connected to that person. I think God gives us a special authority to pray for those people that we're that close to and to break down these strongholds. And that's a reminder for us too, going back to this verse in Isaiah, that we have the power to proclaim freedom for captives and release from darkness for prisoners. We have the power to speak to those sins that are holding our husbands captive and telling them to release. So, we're going to be praying for that today, and then tomorrow we're going to take one more look at sin. We're going to be talking about generational sins, which is another kind of facet here. But let's close today both with prayer and with a great uh, verse from Galatians, where our hope is that God would bring both us and our husbands to this point where we could say, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. So whatever huge sin struggle your husband is facing, I want you to be encouraged to know that God can bring him to a place of deep and powerful freedom. And if your husband looks like he's got it all together, and you're like, well, I don't even know what, you know, what these big kind of prayers to pray for would be, you can be asking God, you know, what, what prayers can you be praying for your husband? And speaking of prayer, let's go ahead and do that. God, I pray for my husband to have complete freedom from sin. I pray that he would no longer be captive to sin. I pray that you would be revealing to him any hidden sin that he might not even know about. I pray that he would be able to confess his sin to you and not deny that it's a problem in his life. I pray that you would reveal to him the root of his sin, maybe where it came from or, or what needs to be done to be fully free from that, Lord. And I just speak freedom over my husband and ask that anything that holds him captive and anything that holds him back from being the man after your own heart that you want him to be would be broken down in the name of Jesus. Amen.